One of the most often cited economic performance metrics is the gross domestic product. However, when evaluating a nation's productivity on the macro scale, few numbers are far more important to understand than the GDP. But why does the GDP matter so much for economists and investors? Stay tuned to find out. And let's begin. GDP is an economic indicator that estimates the monetary value of goods and services generated within the boundary of a country during a specific time period. The GDP is computed in quarters or years as given by a country's economic authorities. If the output changes over time, it indicates the economic health of a certain country. According to the International Monetary Fund's calculation for 2022, the United States is the world's largest economy, followed by China and Japan. The Bureau of Economic Analysts published GDP figures in the United States quarterly. GDP is an economic indicator that measures the monetary value of goods and services generated within a country. There are numerous methods for calculating GDP, as there are numerous formulas examined by policymakers and investors. You can add up all the people's incomes or all of their expenses, and the answer will be the same for both algorithms. If you choose the income option, you must add the aggregate compensation paid to employ, firm profit and tax minus subsidies. When you use the expenditure technique for GDP calculation, you must include private consumption and investment, government expenditures, and net exports. You can also calculate GDP based on the value of services and goods produced in the economy. The GDP provides a wealth of information about the economy. The GDP is a combined figure that includes a country's private consumption investment, government spending, and net exports. A positive percentage indicates that the U.S. produced more than the prior period. More workers are employed when the country produces more, more services and products are consumed, and potentially more profits are made for shareholders. As a result, stock prices have a reason to rise. A negative percentage indicates that our country generated less overall. Producing less would imply that our economy is contracting or contracting. Services and manufacturing firms are producing fewer items, requiring fewer people, and in many situations producing less income for investors. A negative GDP growth rate for two consecutive quarters is one of the indicators that our economy is in a slump. During our last recession, which lasted from 2008 to 2009, GDP growth was nearly negative 4% in the third quarter of 2008 and over negative 8% in the fourth quarter. GDP is calculated in the currency of the country under consideration. So modifications are necessary when comparing the output value in two countries using different currencies. The standard way is to convert each country's GDP into US dollars and then compare them. Conversion to dollars can be done using either market exchange rates or purchasing power parity exchange rates. The PPP exchange rate is a rate at which one country's currency must be converted into another currency's in order to purchase the same quantity of goods and services in both countries. There is a significant difference between market and PPP-based exchange rates in emerging and developing markets. Most emerging markets in developing countries have a market to PPP US dollars exchange rate ratio of 2 to 4. This is because non-traded products and services are less expensive in low-income countries than in high-income countries. Market and PPP exchange rates are typically significantly closer in mature economies. Because of these differences, emerging and developing countries have a higher projected dollar GDP when the PPP exchange rate is utilized. Yearly GDP totals are widely used to compare national economies by size. Policymakers, financial market participants, and CEOs are more interested in changes in GDP over time, which are expressed as an annualized rate of growth or contraction. This makes comparing annual and quarterly prices easy. GDP can be defined in either nominal or real terms. The value of goods and services produced as collected is used to calculate nominal GDP. It also represents the value of output and changes in the aggregate pricing of the output. For comparing different quarters and output within the same year, nominal GDP is used. For comparing two or more years GDP, real GDP is utilized. This is due to the fact that by removing the influence of inflation, the comparison of various years can now focus purely on volume. Real GDP is an inflation adjusted, which means it's considered changes in market levels to estimate changes in actual output. Because inflation provides no economic advantage to these people, policymakers and financial markets place greater emphasis on real GDP. Since the early 2000s, the United States GDP has steadily grown. Real GDP considers changes in market value, narrowing the gap between output figures from year to year. A big disparity between the country's real and nominal GDP may indicate considerable inflation or deflation in its economy. A country's GDP can be adjusted in various ways to improve its usefulness. 
According to analysts, a country's GDP reflects the size of the economy, but provides information about the country's standard of living. Part of the reason is the population size and cost of living vary globally. It's also equally important to understand that GDP can't explain. GDP is not a measure of the country's overall living standard or well-being. It's also equally important to understand what GDP can explain. GDP is not a measure of the country's overall living standard or well-being. Even though changes in the output of goods and services per person are frequently used to determine whether the typical citizen in the country is better or worse off, they do not account for factors that may be judged significant to general well-being. Elevated output, for example, may come at the expense of environmental harm or other external costs such as noise. It could also include a loss in leisure time or the depletion of natural resources. The distribution of GDP among the country's population rather than the aggregate quantity may influence the quality of life. The United Nations created a Human Development Index to account for such issues, which scores countries on GDP per capita and life expectancy, literacy, and school attendance. Other initiatives such as the Genuine Progress Indicator and the Gross National Happiness Index have been undertaken to account for some of the GDP's inadequacies, but both have their detractors. GDP does not encompass all productive activities, unpaid work such as that done at home or by volunteer and black market activities, for example, are not included since they are difficult to assess and value effectively. For instance, a banker who produces a loaf of bread for a customer would contribute to gross domestic product but would not contribute to GDP if he baked this same bread for his family, although the ingredients he bought would still be counted. Well, why investors make a huge deal out of GDP is a frequent question by anyone trying to grasp economics. You need to comprehend the distinct features included in the gross domestic product because you'll use it if you attempt to invest in a particular company set in a different country. GDP is a very critical statistic that economists and investors use because it'll help them to track the changes in the size of the entire economy. The policymaker will also be able to get the comprehensive measure of economic health through the GDP reports. Reports will also have insights into the factors driving economic growth. Economical health is measured through the changes which are going on in the GDP, and it also matters a lot for the financial prices of various commodities in a particular economy. Strong economic growth in a particular economy will result in a higher corporate profits, and investors will have a great time. GDP reports will provide a full view of economic health, which is why they are vital for economists and investors. Economists calculate the economy's real GDP by adjusting for inflation. Economists can account for the impact of inflation by adjusting output in each given year for the price levels that persisted in a reference year known as the base year, enabling them to compare a nation's GDP from one year to the next and evaluate if there is any real growth. While GDP growth rate is a solid predictor of possible stock price movement, the data is not received promptly. It can take up to two months for the data to be generated and published to the public, after which they may be amended. As a result, the GDP growth rate is a strong explainer, but not necessarily a good predictor of stock market action. Look for the positive trend in the GDP growth rate as an indicator of investment value. If the economy grows between 2 and 4% and other market factors generally stay normal, such as the value of the dollar, worldwide competition, and so on, the stock market is likely to follow suit. You can take into account the GDP of a particular economy if you're planning to invest in it, because it will help you understand the profits and losses you'll have to go through. That's it for today. Subscribe and enable post notifications to stay posted on our uploads. Adios.